intelligence. Greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Reverence to the Word of God. I invite the church to stand up at this moment. We to open the Word of God in the last book. Revelations chapter 2. Revelation 2, chapter verse 11. Revelation 2, 11. Revelation chapter 2, verse 11. Those has the word of our God. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Lord, we praise you for this moment of fellowship. May word may reach our hearts. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. This last song, it speaks about a people that was delivered. And the Bible says the following, If Christ deliver you, you will be truly free. And this song also spoke about hope. The Word of God says the following, that in hope we are saved. And what hope is this that can bring to man salvation? It is written in the Word of God, Christ in us is hope of the glory. We sing this song here, and you, my brother and sister, will come to the house of the Lord. My hope is that you may leave the service, at the end of the service, saying this, I leave now hope of be able to one day to be in heaven, be in the eternity with Jesus. And the text that we just read speaks about an advice. And the Bible says the following, that God is great in advice, in magnificent in power. When we read this verse that says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. But what is interesting is that the one who sent the Spirit to say it to the church what we are hearing the last hour is the one that was killed and resurrected it is the first and the last and as the falling does says the one who died and came back to life and it is about someone that went through this experience of death from death to life it's not something somebody that lived and then died because many have passed through here and they lived and then died even apostle john he lived and died peter he lived and died. Mary, Mother Jesus, she lived and she lived and she died. But all of those people, these servants of the Lord, they were, they died, they died, but their hope did not die the hope of one day resurrecting with our Lord Jesus Christ. And Apostle Paul speaks about it. The ones who died in Christ will resurrect first at the time of the rapture. And us afterwards, who, the ones who are still alive, will be raptured and will remain forever with our God. And this is the first resurrection. But the text here, it speaks regarding the damage of the second death and when we see here the previous verse also speaks about death 
be faithful to that unto death. So whoever is faithful until death, they receive a reward. And what is the reward? The crown of life. And then the Lord says the following, once again, who has an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the church, because whoever receives it is not going to receive the damage of second death. To receive the crown of life in this life, I need to be faithful until I die. But in order for me not to participate in to the second death, in order for me to remain faithful until death, I need to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. But you may ask me, is there a second death? And I'm not going to answer that to you. The Lord will answer to you. And he says the following. And I saw a great white throne. And the one who was sitting on it, whose presence the heaven and earth ran away from, and there was no place for them. In Revelation 20, from verse 11. And I saw the dead, great and small, that were before the throne. And they opened up their books. And there was another book, which was the book of life. And the dead was judged by the things that were written in this book, according to their works. And they, death to the evil poor in there. And death and hell to the ones who were in there and they were judged each one according to their works and the death and hell they were sent into the lake of fire and it says this is the second death the Bible says that God did not predestined us to condemnation but for salvation in Christ Jesus it is not God's desire for me for yours for our lives the desire of the Lord is that man may see and may enter in the place that goes after this text where a servant of God that was faithful unto his death before this he was taken to the presence of the Lord and he says the following and I saw a new heaven and a new earth because the first heaven and first earth have passed and the sea no longer exists and interesting that he said and I John saw the holy city the new Jerusalem uh, uh, where God came down from heaven dressed with a bride prepared for her husband and I heard a loud voice from heaven saying here is the tabernacle of the Lord with man because with him you will inhabit and they will be your people and the same God will be with them and will be their God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's why the Lord gives us an alert, a warning. That's why the Lord gives us this advice. So that we may hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And every time, and all the time, the Lord has manifested himself. Every, all the time the Lord has spoken he has revealed himself to his servants from the beginning from Genesis to our days God has spoken to man and the text here says who has an ear who believes who gives creed to our preaching to whom the arm of the Lord has manifested to 
And here the Lord gives us this warning for the church at that moment. And it was a church that was going through a period of trial and tribulation. Smyrna derives from the word myrrh, which means suffering. And Jesus, when he was gathered with his disciples, he said, in the world you have afflictions. But it's not over there. But he also says, be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. And later on, Apostle Paul says the following, Who, what could separate me from the love of Christ? The anguish, the tribulation, the sadness, the pain, the height, the depth. He says, because I'm sure that not even death, not even death. Paul knew that he would not be separate from, separated from the Lord even by death. Death has no power to separate the servant of God. That's why when we look to the book of Revelations and we see who are the ones who are wearing white garments, where they came from. Those are the ones that washed out their garments and whited them out with the blood of the Lamb. In other words, they never got disconnected from God. Death never separated them. The suffering never pushed them away from the Lord. Why is that? Because they gave credence to the word of the Holy Spirit, because they heard the advice of the Lord for their lives, and because they remained faithful to the Lord. And the Bible says, speaks about many servants of God in the past that suffered persecuted anguish and sadness and tribulation but they were victorious why is that because my brethren you have been called to be victorious to overcome death to overcome the world and how can we to here have this resource to become victorious we are weak. But the Bible says that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. When I'm weak, that's when I am strong. Why is that? Because the Lord strengthens me. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. It is the Spirit of strength that we have learned in our Sunday schools. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us the strength, gives us this encouragement that raises the servant of God up and gives him this resource so that he, he can become more than victorious. So the Lord says the following, Who has an ear? Listen to what the Spirit is telling the church. And you who came here tonight, we are here in this place to hear what the Spirit has to our churches. Maybe we have heard, may, heard many things and we get distracted with many things, many opinions, right? Everyone has their own thoughts and feelings and their ideas. And that's all right. But the opinions of the world, the opinions, even the opinions of our friends, the people that are close to us, they are not going to give us access to the presence of God. The advices that you may receive, that I might receive, is not going to deliver me from the damage of the second death. And the word says that it is a damage, it is a harm, and it's, it's a harm that you cannot get, a, get out of. Why is that? Because the rescue of a soul is very uh, costly. The Bible says that all our money is not enough to buy a soul. Because not with precious things like gold or silver, but it is the precious blood of Jesus. That's why the Lord gives so much worth to hearing. The, you need to give worth to the Word of God, to hear the advice of the Holy Spirit, to give credence to everything that the Lord is saying to you and to me tonight. Because the Holy Spirit is 
is speaking, is doing a work, is preparing people to inherit eternity. And whoever overcomes, and it is for the ones who overcome, the loser will not take anything. Isn't it true? In the world is the same way. And here is the same thing. To the victorious. Right? And to be victorious is to have Christ. To be victorious is to have the Holy Spirit in your life. To be victorious is to obey the Word of God. To be victorious is to give credence to the Lord. When you obey, when you give credence, when you hear the Holy Spirit and you answer what the Lord has established for your life, you will be blessed. You will be happy. You will be, be more than victorious. And Paul speaks about this. I the sermons in the past, I lived this experience. I also testify in the Bible about this. But the desire of the Lord is that you and I that each one of us may also not receive the damage of the second death, but participate on the resurrection with Christ Jesus and to meet in this place where the servant of God was able to testify of what the Lord has prepared for you and for I, for our lives. The Lord has shown tonight in a spiritual gift a woman the Lord brought this woman here so she can hear uh, a message from the Lord to your life and particularly for her life. This woman that has, she has, I'm going to be very clear here, she has idols, images, statues of saints. I, I used, used to have it crucifix. I used to carry a rosary around my neck. My mother used to have a, a saint, a, a statue of a saint, and she used to lit up, light up a, a candle, Mary, Peter, and Anthony, John, Mark, Mark, Luke, John. They do not save. They were servants of God, faithful to the Lord. They will participate in the first resurrection but they have no power to save. They were saved by Christ also. And you should follow their example, not adoring them, but following their example. They were faithful to the Lord, and today they are with the Lord in eternity. They don't save. Only Jesus Christ can save. No church also, no church saves. Only Jesus Christ saves. Believe in Jesus, you will be saved. And it's only in Jesus. If you put two people, three people, you cancel the project. Only Jesus. Believe in Jesus and you will be saved. And if you don't believe, it is the second death. So now, this is a message from the Lord to this woman tonight. Because the Lord wants to give to this person, the servant of God, this understanding that he wants to save her. He wants to transform your life. He wants to give you a place in heaven, a place in eternity. The Lord also has shown another woman. She has an emotion, emotional problem. She has a psychological, emotional problem. She has sought uh, uh, help, professional help to help her with her bitterness. She has pursued her for a long time this woman knows the gospel she knows the word of God but not but only knowing the word the word is not enough we need to know the author of the word in the word of life and the living word the author is Jesus you need to know knowing the word is good but knowing Jesus is much better right and the Lord has shown that this woman, she has this biblical knowledge, but she has this emotional problem. And tonight, during the service, the Lord was going to speak to this woman's heart 
and there is a, a specific message directly to you, you need to forgive. Forgive. And God, uh, in our Lord's Prayer, it says, forgive our sins as we forgive the ones who have done wrong to us. There are a few sins that the Lord does not forgive. Suicide, God does not forgive. Sin against the Holy Spirit, the Lord does not forgive. And not forgiving, God does not forgive. So this problem that you, my sister, you have no psychiatrist will resolve because it is spiritual. You need to forgive in order to be forgiven. It is written, if I don't forgive, I will not be forgiven. Also, your father will not forgive you. And who does this is Jesus. So we need to forgive in order to be forgiven. And my, my sister, as you do this, you will be delivered from this feeling, from this anguish, from this sadness. You are not going to need any psychiatrist anymore because you have the Holy Spirit to guide you and direct your life. And the question is now, what do I do in order to forgive, to remove this thing from my heart? And the Lord says, walk in my presence. Hand your path to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will do everything. He'll give you strength for you to overcome all of those traumas. The Lord also was showing another man. This man has gone through a moment of spiritual coldness that is very intense to the point that he cannot even, even leave the situation in which he is. And this is because he knows the Bible, a lot of the Bible. It's interesting, right? He knows a, a lot about the Bible, but only the letter. And the letter kills. The Spirit brings life. So he and dove so much into the ladder and is atta too attached to it and is bringing a harm to his spiritual life. But tonight, through the word, the Lord is reproaching this spiritual coldness. But you need to leave this place with something else. You need to leave this place with the blessing of the Holy Spirit upon your life. And that's what the Lord is giving you tonight. The Lord wants to give to you tonight. He wants you to have this experience with the Holy Spirit so that you may live here glorifying the name of God for everything that He has done for, for you and to your benefit, for the deliverance, for salvation, for the proposal the Lord has for you, my brother and sister, of our life, an eternal life with you, with Him. Amen. Let's sing a song of praise.
We are going to have now a, a word of glorification to our God. Hallelujah. You are holy, Lord. I want to praise you and pray for a sacrifice on the cross that guarantees our victory. Pray to you, Lord, because the blood shed on the cross for us. We praise you. Lord. Em nome de Jesus. Amém. Em nome de Jesus. Bravos heróis da fé. Que fala sobre isso. The heroes of faith. Because it speaks about this. The brethren who died on the cross. And received this crown of glory.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy is your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Bring a revival to your kingdom, Lord, in this last day, in our lives and in our hearts. Give us a resource from your eternity so that we remain faithful to you. Bless your people, Lord, your church, the visitor who came to your sanctuary, manifest in his lives, their lives, answer their needs, visit them with the Holy Spirit, bring comfort to the heart tonight, deliver them, heal them, save them them, Lord, for the glorification of your name. Also give them a week, a blessed week, a week of experiences. Doors may be open, Lord, so that your name may be glorified. Receive the service and in adoration, our gratitude we offer to you in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. You who are here with us, you are welcome to this place. We have service here every Tuesday, which is the Sunday school uh, discussion of the Sunday school. Every Thursday, a prayer service. Every Saturday morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, early dawn service. Every Saturday at 6 o'clock, a, a women meeting. Every Saturday at 7.30, a service of glorification to the Lord every Sunday at 10 o'clock in the morning. We have Sunday school and every Sunday evening at 7.30 another service of glorification to the Lord. You, my brother and sister, you are invited to participate. If you desire prayer for your life, a clarification to everything that you heard and listened to and saw tonight, the spiritual gift that were shared, we are here at your disposal and wish everyone the peace of the Lord.